Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to be talking about remodeling a fireplace, and we'd like to thank Rachel Melke for liking and sharing the podcast. We are putting the finishing touches on book six, and we will have a book promotion at the start of next year. It's going to be a good one, too. Thank you. <laughs> You're getting better. Every book is, like, better. I hope so. In early American homes, fireplaces were large to provide heat, and many were used to cook food, so pots would be hung off chains or metal rods, and they could be swung over the fire and adjusted to control the heat. Have we talked about this before? Yeah, fascinating. Well, apparently, since you're talking about it again. (laughs) There was a study done of 155,000 homeowners by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, and they found that 40% of homes have usable fireplaces. Hmm. In the 1970s, only about 35% of new homes had fireplaces, and a recent poll says about 60% of new homes have a fireplace. Wow. The National Association of Home Builders says that about 75% of homeowners want a fireplace, and the National Association of Real Estate Appraisers says a fireplace can increase the resale value of a home 6 to 12%. If you have an old fireplace and you don't like the look of it, Instead of tearing it out, you could just update it? Yeah, absolutely. Because the expense of tearing it out probably wouldn't be worth it if you plan on reselling your home one day. Right. Because people are looking for a fireplace. And if you're not using your fireplace, you can put in a flue blocker or a draft stopper, and that's going to insulate it better. Right. Some top-rated draft stoppers are from the chimney balloon, the chimney umbrella, and flue blocker. And flue blockers are made out of wool from the Herdwick sheep. And, you know, Herdwick sheep, they're born with black fleece. And then after about a year, the wool on their head turns white. And then their body turns brown. And then as they get older, their body turns gray. What is with you and sheep? <laughs> Herdwick sheep, mainly found in England. And in England, they use the wool for carpets and home insulation. And there's a company called Thermofleece that makes rolls of wool insulation from sheep. And you can use this in walls, floors, and roofs. Hmm. Wow, huh? Yep. If you don't like the look of the brick inside your fireplace opening, you can add glass fireplace doors to improve or modernize the look, and it's going to help reduce energy loss from an old damper. Are you going to explain what a damper is? So the damper is this flap inside the flue that you open when you're burning wood, and then you close this when you're not using the fireplace. That's going to help prevent losing hot air in the winter and cool air in the summer. There are some very decorative fireplace screens you can get to cover an ugly firebox, and it's also good to help prevent sparks from leaving the fireplace. Right. If you plan on closing off the fireplace and not using it, some designers recommend filling the firebox with logs. Like completely? Yeah, it's pretty eye-catching when you see a fireplace completely filled up. And you can also just get some decorative logs like birch and put it on a fireplace grate. And I saw one house where they filled the opening with old hardcover books. And they kind of stack them randomly. I've seen a a couple designers, they use old suitcases or antiques in there, electric candles at different heights. Or any other junk you want to get rid of? (laughs) Sheep antlers. (laughs) (laughs) If you plan on remodeling or updating the outside of your fireplace, the National Fire Code and the National Standard Building Code requires all combustible material be kept at least six inches from the side of the fireplace opening And mantles, usually 12 inches from the top of the firebox, and I would check my local code. Most regulations want one inch of clearance for every eighth of an inch of combustible material thickness. Mm. So if you had a mantle or legs coming down for a mantle, and they're an inch and a half, let's say, one inch would be eight eighths, a half an inch is four eighths, so that would be 12 eighths. And if there's an inch for every eighth, 12 eighths would be 12 inches away. Math. (laughs) <laughs> so some exciting listening. So if <laughs> so if a mantle was two inches, it would be sixteen eighths. So you'd need that sixteen inches away from the opening. And also check the clearance recommendations from manufacturers of any material that you're using, hmm. because it, that's going to vary also. Right. I think we should cover some of the fireplace terms. Like what is a surround? 
So the surround is that non-flammable face material on the outside of the opening of the firebox. And the firebox is the term for just the, the opening where you would build your fire. I should have started there. Right. <laughs> and then the surround is going to be like metal, tile, or stone. And it's usually going to be that 6 inches off to the sides and 12 inches about off to the top. The hearth is the non-combustible material on the floor in front of the firebox. For a masonry fireplace with an opening of less than six square feet, it should extend 16 inches in front of the opening and eight inches on each side. Hmm. And a fireplace larger than six square feet, the hearth should extend 20 inches in front and 12 inches on each side. But I would check my local code. It's going to vary across the country. What is the mantle? So the mantle is that shelf above the opening on the fireplace, and you can have just the mantle itself, or you can have legs coming down the sides of it, and that will frame the surround really nice. Okay. If you're remodeling the hearth in front of the fireplace, it can be a variety of material as long as it's non-flammable. You can use brick, stone, tile, concrete, or metal. I saw one home, it had a hearth that was recessed in the floor, and they filled it with decorative stone. Hmm. That's pretty wild. And that hearth is going to protect your flooring from heat or sparks or if a burning log rolled out of the fireplace. So if you're remodeling a room, you can't remove it? Right. It would be a problem if you resell the house. Plus, it's dangerous. You definitely want to protect that area in front of the fireplace. There are hearth mats and hearth rugs which are self-extinguishing or they're non-flammable. And there's some that are made out of wool which are self-extinguishing. It requires more oxygen than is available in the air for wool to become flammable. Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? Yep. So depending on your home and the fireplace, you could have a lowered hearth, a flush hearth to the opening, or a raised hearth. Okay. If your hearth is a stone slab and the surround is stone also and it's cracked or damaged, or you just don't like it and want to replace it and put a new stone slab, you can pry off the surround with a pull and pry bar. Many of these are going to be held in place just with construction adhesive. But if it's held in place with mortar on cement board, you may have to remove a section of the cement board to replace it. And cement board is actually good around a fireplace rather than drywall, especially if you're going to be putting up tile or stone around the surround. The old hearth could be glued in place so you can pry it up, or it might be set in a bed of mortar, so you may have to break it apart to remove it. And then check with the manufacturer of your new stone slab hearth to see how they recommend installing it. Some of these can be set in a bed of mortar, but some companies want you to use a product like Micor Board. It's M-I-C-O-R-E. And put this underneath your hearth, and that's going to cushion the stone and help prevent it from cracking. Who makes that? It's by USG, and it's very popular. It's a mineral fiber board. Also, what's popular is wool fiber board. Oh, you uh, know wool, man. <laughs> underneath the hearth. And if you use an adhesive rather than mortar to hold the stone in place, make sure you check the recommended types. Some adhesives can bleed through the stone and stain it. That'd be a drag. Yeah, yeah, terrible. You can get stone slab kits that are pre-cut for around a fireplace, or you can use the same type of slabs for kitchen backsplashes or shower walls. And if you're looking for a traditional fireplace look, a full mantle with the vertical legs on each side really finish off stone edges very well. For a modern look, you can extend that stone up the wall to the ceiling or cover the whole wall with stone around your fireplace and not use a mantle, and that'll give it a very contemporary look. Until you don't like that stone anymore. Right, then you just paint over it. (laughs) If you don't want to remove the old stone slab and want to go over it with a new slab or tile, you can use a grinder to roughen it up or cut slits into it, and that way the mortar is going to grab onto it. If you don't like the look of granite or marble surrounds and you want a brick or a rustic stone look, you can use ceramic wall tile that has the look of brick or stone. Right. And you would just put it up like you would a regular tile. And they have thin clay bricks mounted to fiberglass webbing. It's kind of like mosaic tile, except it's brick-shaped. And you would put that on the wall like tile and then grout between the brick and you'd get this brick wall look. Okay. If you have a very traditional looking fireplace with a full mantle and legs and have a vaulted ceiling, you can tile up the wall to the ceiling, remove that old mantle and the legs, use a brick looking wall tile, then you can add either like a thick rustic wood mantle just itself with no legs or something more modern, Mm -hmm. and you can completely change the look of a room. Right. You can also get stacked stone or manufactured stone panels. They're very lightweight. Some of these are made out of concrete or other materials. You want to check. Concrete is lightweight. 
Yeah, well, it's very thin. So the stacked stone, you know, compared to real stone, it's, it's lightweight. <laughs> it's fluffy concrete. Yes. But you want to check the specifications. You want to make sure it's non-combustible. Some of these stacked stone panels can be installed on drywall. Some, they recommend cement board. And then also compare the adhesives. Some of these don't have to be grouted, too. So they just kind of interlock. Hmm. Put adhesive on it. You put them up and you're done. So it's actually a pretty simple way to, you know, completely change the look of your fireplace. You should consider what tools you're going to need to complete this project. Yeah, because some of these panels can be cut with a circular saw. Some need a wet saw, so that can help your decision. And also, can they be used up to the fireplace opening, or they do they need to be set back that six inches or more? And if they need to be set back from the opening, what are you going to be using for the fireplace surround? So it's not so much work. Right? You could just tile it, right? Yeah, put up ceramic tile on the surround and also on the hearth. And that's an easy project, especially if you can remove the old material. If you have a brick fireplace, you could tile right over the brick. Then it'll be a dramatic change, especially yeah. if you change the colors. Right. What do you have to do to the bricks before you tile it? So for most projects, you'd clean the old bricks very well and then mix some mortar and fill the gaps between the bricks and fill any imperfections. You'd want to pull the mortar smooth to the brick's face, and you're going to create just a flat surface to tile on. You'd let that fully cure probably overnight, and then you can just lay your tile right over the face of that. So this is if all the bricks are even, right? Right. Another easy update is to add a mantle or change the mantle. Yeah, there's a wide range of styles you can get, and I would compare the mounting requirements before I purchased some need a wood cleat that's screwed into the wall, and then you're either going to nail or screw your mantle to that. Some come with mounting brackets, but some of these large wood mantles, they want threaded rods epoxied into brick to hold it. Wow. So I would look at the installation instructions. Mm -hmm. You can also get salvaged wood mantles, and these are taken from old homes. And I spoke to Kelly from the Columbus Architectural Salvage, and they have a nice selection of wood mantles. They're in Columbus, Ohio. And if you're not in that area, they can ship mantles to you. Oh, really? And they also have old doors and lighting and other hardware. So if you're looking for a historic look, I think like a salvage yard or an antique store is an interesting place to look. Hmm. You could just stain the old brick, right? Yeah, if you have brick that isn't sealed or painted, you can use a concrete stain to change the color of the brick. A semi-transparent concrete stain will keep that natural look of the brick and to test whether you can stain it, you can sprinkle some water on the surface, and if it gets absorbed, you can use a semi-transparent stain. You'd want to clean it well first, use a TSP or a TSP substitute, and then you can put a semi-transparent stain in a pump sprayer and really? just spray it on, or you can use a brush or a roller, and then you can cover that with a sealer to protect it. A solid color stain is more like a paint. Right. It's going to ride on the surface rather than being absorbed. Mm -hmm. What about painting the bricks? Yeah, you can definitely paint bricks, and you're going to get your best results if you clean them well first and then prime them with a concrete or masonry primer that's designed for the chemicals in the brick, and that's going to protect your top coat. Some top-rated primers, Sherwin-Williams has something called Loxon, it's L-O-X-O-N, and this is a primer sealer for concrete and masonry. Kills 2, it's K-I-L-Z, and the number 2, and this is for masonry and brick, it's water-based. Zinser, it's Z-I-N-S-S-E-R. They have their Bullseye 1, 2, 3 Plus, mm -hmm. and this is water-based. If you have areas around the firebox that are smoke-stained, you can use a shellac to spot prime those areas. Okay. For a fireplace that's already been painted, if you plan on repainting it, you need to be careful about scraping or sanding it if it's older than 1978. There could be lead in the paint, so use a lead test kit, or you might want to just cover it. I spoke to Beyond Paint, and they said that their product doesn't need a primer because it uses nanotechnology. No way. <laughs> and so you would use put one coat on first, it seals the brick, and then put a second coat to cover it and give it a great looking top coat. And they also have a sealer you can use to protect the paint, especially if you're painting close to the fireplace opening. Okay. You can whitewash brick to change the color and the look. Real whitewash is hydrated lime, salt, and water, but a popular way to whitewash is to mix a paint 50-50 with water, and then you're using a sponge or a rag, and you're pressing the whitewash onto the bricks, and you're creating this worn look. Mm -hmm. And you can also use a roller or a paintbrush and paint a thin coat onto a small area. 
then wipe it off with a rag or paper towels to get a color change. And then you're going to keep adding or removing paint till you get the look you want. And you want some of the color of the old brick to show through. And I would start from the top and work my way down. That way you can keep wiping off any drips. So are you just using white paint for this or a color? Either. Yeah, most people will use white. But yeah, you could use a like maybe like a very light color okay. and kind of give it a dramatic look. To have a more extreme look, you can create a skip trowel effect like you'd see with plastered walls. So what do you mean, like a Venetian wall? Yeah, that or like the Spanish textured effect. And you're completely covering the brick or the stone below this. I spoke to Sacrete, it's S-A-K-R-E-T-E, and they recommend using a Type S mortar if you're doing a skip trowel effect. And then they said use a random swirl pattern. You can use Type S mortar to create the German schmear, or it's called the German smear. What is it? So you're taking the mortar with a trowel or a rubber float, and you're pulling it smooth over the face of the brick, and you're filling the grout lines. You're working in one area at a time. You're going to go back over the area with a damp sponge, and you're wiping over the face of the brick, and you're exposing the brick face, and you're going to do this in a random pattern. And it really gives an interesting aged look. Mm. It changes the color. Or you can make a thin mix of your mortar and use a sponge, dip it in, wipe it over the face of the brick, and you're partially filling the grout line, so it really gives kind of a unique look. You're going to let the brick show through in different areas. Mm. You can use a standard mortar, which is gray in color, or you can get a white mortar. You can also use a tint and tint it to whatever color. If you have that like 1970s look where the whole wall is rock or stone right. for your fireplace and you hate <laughs> yeah, it, right. there's really not much you could do, but you could actually build a wall in front of it. Right. And if you didn't want to remove the old stone, I would leave the stone as your surround. So you're going to leave at least 6 inches on each side and 12 inches plus on the top, depending on how far you're coming out. Build a partition wall like we talked about in past episodes around this. And then you could put a full mantle, so a mantle with legs on it, and right. use the old stone or brick as your surround. And you could have a very distinctive look. And now the rest of the wall just looks normal, right. just a smooth <laughs> wall. Do you have anything else to add? If you have a fireplace that you're not using or you just don't like the look of it, you can remodel it rather than removing it because a high percentage of new homeowners want a fireplace right. if you think you're going to be selling your home one day. And if you're adding a new mantle or combustible materials around your fireplace, make sure you keep it at least 6 inches from the sides, 12 inches from the top of the opening, and then adjust that to the thickness of the material. You want 1 inch away for every eighth of an inch of thickness. Get a wool draft blocker when you're not using your fireplace and a wool hearth rug. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, CastBox, the Pandora mobile app, or your favorite podcast app. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our books, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know on Amazon, book one through five, early next year, book six. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com, and you can follow Cindy on Twitter at fixitcohost. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Deep, 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 de